Alrighty guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be making just a little bit more progress on the Jeep Cherokee LS swap that we're in the middle of. My name's LT and on this channel we build custom, high performance and off-road vehicles. So if you like any of that content, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel. And for some reason I should tell you to click that notification bell even though I actually never do it on any of the channels that I subscribe to, but you should subscribe at least. Anyway, the goal for today is to get the fuel system knocked out, and I already did get a little bit of a head start on it, but if you're new to the channel, here's kind of a quick overview of what we're doing. 98 Cherokee XJ, two-door Sport, and it's got a six liter LQ4 underneath the hood. And I'd say we're probably about two thirds of the way done with the swap. The powertrain's in, the exhaust is built. That definitely is one of the biggest time consuming parts of a build like this. So the major things that I have left to do, we've got the fuel system, we've got the cooling system, and then the wiring. After that, this thing is pretty much ready to start up and go on a test drive. Because all, I shouldn't say the hard work, but a lot of the difficult projects are already done. So fuel system. Now, the pump that comes in the tanks in these XJ Cherokees, and I believe a TJ, this applies to as well, the fuel pump should be adequate to supply enough fuel to support a somewhat stock-ish, maybe a little bit modified V8 engine. But the problem is, the fuel pressure regulator that comes in these tanks, or in the fuel pump assembly, is at a too low pressure. I'm not sure what it's at, it's probably somewhere around 40 PSI, where we want to run nearly 60 PSI on an application like this. I did get a head start and I've got the tank pulled out and I already pulled out the um, fuel pump uh, hanger bucket assembly, however you'd like to refer to it. And I've already got the conversion done on the top, but here's a quick overview of what you're going to have to do. So this is the stock Jeep fuel pressure regulator and normally it sits right here on the top of the tank. And this is what is responsible for lowering the fuel pressure from pump pressure, which I mean an electric fuel pump like that could pump anywhere around, you know, 100 or 110 PSI, which obviously is too much, oh, first one for the day, first obviously, which is too much for most fuel injected engines. So we have to use a regulator of sorts to lower the pressure to our desired level. This pressure uh, regulator is not adjustable and it's set, like I said, somewhere around that 30 to 40 PSI mark. And we're gonna be using a Corvette style, which is very common in LS swaps, a Corvette fuel filter regulator assembly. I've got it right down here on the floor. And so more or less, we've got two lines that go into here. One is a feed, one is a return. There's also a filter and a regulator assembly in here. So this does two functions. And then a single line is gonna run all the way up to the uh, fuel rail or the engine ultimately. On the fuel pump side, we have to get rid of that regulator because that's too low of a pressure, but you can't just gut the thing apart because it'll just allow all the fuel to bypass into the tank. But Novak does luckily sell this billet aluminum adapter, which more or less is a simple conversion. All you do is you pop the top off of here. There's this little clip, pop the old regulator out. There's two O-rings, jam the new one in there, and that is your supply side. So the fuel pump down in here pushes fuel pressure out. And then we need to get fuel back into the tank. So they also, uh, Novak includes with their kit, this little bulkhead fitting. You simply drill a hole in there. There's some plastic washers. You got to use some of this form of gasket sealant stuff. I guess this is compatible or will work with the plastic and all that good stuff and fuel. And then lastly, because Novak supplies barbed fittings on the feed and the return, we're using just some of this traditional rubber. This is high pressure for fuel injection line. And then we've got some of these quick connects like here, that's going to go onto the filter. And then I use these little, I think they're called Otaker clamps. And I like these a lot better than a screw on style clamp. I feel like they're more permanent. Uh, so anyway, two Otaker clamps on there, and then I'll put another quick connect on this one. I haven't trimmed the return side to length yet. And that is going to be the fuel system. So now what I've got to do is get that fuel pump hanger back in the tank. It's basically a direct drop in because it came right out. And then I'll get the tank back up under the Jeep. Once again, super easy. And then all I've got to do is run a, oh, well, actually, I guess I do need to mount the filter regulator. I'll get the hoses trimmed to length, mount that. And then all I have to do from there is run a single line from the outlet of that filter regulator assembly all the way up to the rail. And I think what I'm going to do is there's a crossover line that was on the back here. I'd like to have the crossover line up front, but I think it will interfere with this throttle cable that's ultimately going to go here. So the crossover's on the back and I'll probably feed the rail from the front, which means I have to have like a 180 fitting. So I'll see what we got to do here. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. First things first, we'll get the tank back under the Jeep.
So I got quite a bit done, started out by putting the fuel pump assembly back into the tank. Uh, that's all a direct drop in and it's secured with a big plastic nut that kind of threads down onto some threads that are in the outside of the tank. Now you could use some channel locks, some really big channel lock pliers or just maybe your hands to get that on there. But the tool that I use, I picked this up for a job. Uh, my wife's E90 we had forever ago. This is specifically for tightening those fuel tank uh, locking rings. Has those two little fingers that nicely engage on the outside of it. There's a 916 nut kind of in there. And so you can easily put a ratchet on there and tighten that thing down in. It's especially helpful on a vehicle like this uh, XJ where the top of the fuel pump is kind of set down in and the tank comes up around it. It would be difficult to get some pliers in there. And then there's a lot of hoses and wires and stuff around there. So pick one of those up if you want. I grabbed it from Amazon, I think. I'll try to find the link and put it down in the description below. But it is a very useful tool. You don't use it a lot, but whenever you do use it, it comes in handy. Uh, next, I got the tank mounted up underneath the Jeep. That's a direct bolt in because obviously it came from this Jeep. The owner does have a heat shield skid plate assembly thing, but he didn't bring it with him. That's still down in Texas. So for now, we just got the tank hanging in there and then I mounted the Corvette filter regulator assembly just on the upper cross member. I wish I could have got it a little bit higher, but with the way they put that bracket is kind of like a one way only thing. Um, so for the lines to work, I got it as high as I can. Uh, and the axle is never going to come close to it. I'm not worried about anything hitting. I just always prefer stuff a little bit higher if possible. After that, I started working on the fuel line and I hate, I mean, I hate working with the stainless steel braided AN line stuff. It's, I avoid it whenever possible, but this was provided with the Jeep. So that's what we're going to use. And the biggest thing is just getting the hose nuts over the end of the hose. And whenever you cut the braided line, it just wants to kind of spring apart on you. Uh, so I tried two or three different times because I hate leaving tape on the end. Uh, first, like I can do with cloth hose, I'll just cut it with tape and then pull the tape off. But when I pull the tape off on this stainless braid, as you can see, it just kind of flared right out. And there's no way you're getting that into the hose nut. Next, I tried some electrical tape. I kind of like that because it's sort of rubberish, maybe. Um, and that held a little better, but you can still see it kind of flared out and it wasn't, or it flared out too much to get the hose nut on the end. So finally, I just used a little bit of blue masking tape. Focus there. Come on. Yeah, so blue masking tape, and that actually very nicely held the braid in. It still flares out ever so slightly, and I did have to fight with it to get it in the hose nut. Uh, one thing that's helpful to save your fingertips, this is actually a weather strip and windshield uh, tool. I used to work in the windshield business ages ago. It's just made from hard plastic like nylon, and this like saves your fingertips by squeezing that stainless braid in there. So. Like I said, I hate working with this stuff, but that being said, it is very durable because it has that nice stainless braid on the outside. Normally, if this were me, I would grab some of that cloth, high pressure braided stuff I think that Earl's makes. But anyway, this will work just fine. We're gonna make a connection into the fuel filter with this uh, male 3 8 quick connect that adapts to dash 6 AN. I'll try to put some part numbers down below for all this stuff too. And we've got a 90 degree dash six hose end on the end of the hose. And this is gonna go all the way up to the fuel rail. And then I'll just put the crossover on and make the connection between the two sides. Uh, one last note, I kind of did this off camera, but I didn't install the stock, or not the stock, the drive shaft that was originally in this Jeep. And one question a lot of you guys have asked down in the comments was about how much further forward is the transmission and transfer case in a swap like this? Because there's not a lot of information out there. And based on my best guesstimate, it's about three inches further forward. So this drive shaft does have a slip yoke in it. And right now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we are nearly maxed out. There's only about two and a half inches in the back part of the drive shaft. So I've got it bolted in there for now, number one, so I can kind of take a quick measurement. And number two, if I don't have a new drive shaft by the time this project is done, this will at least allow me to drive the thing maybe onto a trailer. I don't know if I'll be really comfortable driving it at speed down the highway, certainly not flexing it off road because that thing will pull right out. But at least this will get us on the road. So now I'm gonna get that fuel line just kind of plugged in. I'll run it up to the valve cover because I don't have a 180 hose end, which does bring me to another point I was gonna bring up. Um, there's two different types of hose ends that we're using here for this Jeep project. Uh, one, let's see, this is more of the Jigs hose. We've got these hose ends here. This came with that black cloth braided stuff I used on the trans cooler. And these are the fittings that go with the Jigs um, stainless braided line. 
You do not want to use hose ends from different manufacturers on different hoses, especially one that was, say, designed for cloth braid on a stainless braid hose. It will probably not work. I mean, yeah, maybe it might. There's a 180 there, but I don't really trust those fittings in the first place, the ones that came from Amazon. So we're going to just order a Jigs fitting. Like I said, don't mix and match. It's just not worth the risk, especially if you're building a hose assembly that has something rather volatile going through it, like gasoline. So get the hose back under the Jeep, then we'll call it quits. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the fuel system conversion for this LS swap in the 98XJ Cherokee. This should apply to a lot of different years of Jeeps, even some TJs, as well as the XJ platform and who knows what else. And you know, fuel system stuff is sort of universal. I mean, the Corvette regulator filter assembly is probably one of the most popular things you can do on an LS swap because how, of how inexpensive it is. I mean, you could put one of those high dollar billet aluminum bypass regulators up front, but it'll more or less do the same thing, control how much fuel pressure comes up to the fuel rail. And if you do one of those, I think they're like 200 bucks, then you still have to have different fuel filters and things along the frame rail. So like on a high end hot rod, yeah, go for it. But for just your everyday driver swap you know the corvette regulator assembly i think they're like 55 to 60 bucks for the wix version and you can even get them cheaper than that if you just kind of go with the knockoff brands but like i said 55 60 bucks not a huge deal plus the cost of some hose uh, and you can do a conversion like that on just about any vehicle you got your pump you got a regulator that's pretty much what you need the only last connection that i have to make is right up here on the front of the driver's side fuel rail and I am going to order a 180 degree fitting so it kind of loops right around and goes in there. Do have the crossover on the back. And like I mentioned earlier, the reason I'm not putting the crossover on the front and entering the rail on the back is because of the throttle cable bracket right here. But if this were like a drive by wire, then I definitely would do that. Have the crossover up front and enter on the back of probably that rail and plug that one. Anyhow. That wraps it up. This will wrap up the upload. And a little bit later on this week, I'm headed down to Arizona. I will show you guys kind of some of the stuff that I'm gonna bring for the trip, sort of like, what do I pack and how am I preparing? Because I think it's like a six or 700 mile drive from the house here in Utah down to Chandler, Arizona. Um, so that'll come in just a little bit. You guys know what to do. Click the like button on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below about what you would like to see next, or if you have a project that you'd like to have me take on for you. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. Also, if you want, head on over to tolmanperformance.com, grab a hoodie, grab a hat. I don't need a hat anymore, but that'll wrap it up. Thank you guys. Catch you next time.